dear friends, colleagues, I welcome you in Parliament of Georgia. Thanks for everyone for coming here on Monday morning, and special thanks to the members of the uh, Council of Europe Parliamentary Assembly Monitoring Committee members who decided to have their committee meeting in Tbilisi this year, and we appreciate this decision very much. Later, we will have, of course, the, com uh, the monitoring committee meeting, but before that, we wanted to take this opportunity and um, have a seminar about the role of the parliament in oversight as well as the role of opposition. So um, uh, I believe we will have interesting discussions ahead. And um, uh, once again, um, I greet all of you, especially the speaker of the parliament who is with us today, and more of members of the parliament will join us um, later. So I would pass uh, the word uh, to Sir Roger Gale the Chair of the Monitoring Committee of um, uh, Council of Europe Parliamentary Assembly. And um, after that, I will have an honor to pass the word to the Speaker of the Parliament of Georgia. Sir Roger, please. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Madam Deputy Speaker, uh, colleagues from the Georgian Parliament, ladies and gentlemen. The first thing that's wrong with my notes, which were prepared for me, is it says, welcome. I don't think it's right for me to welcome you to somebody else's country. But it is a huge pleasure both to see so many of the members of the Monitoring Committee here and um, to be here in a splendid country. Those of us who... Uh, were able to enjoy the cultural visit yesterday, have already appreciated your hospitality, and we're deeply grateful to Tamar and to Nina and to Sophie, who took the trouble out of what undoubtedly was a busy weekend to accompany us. Um, politics is, a, as we all know, precarious business, and you always need to have another job lined up in case you find that the one that you're doing at the moment suddenly comes to an end. Um, I think I can say with some confidence that those of us who went yesterday are now very well qualified um, as grape harvesters, although I'm not so sure that we're very good at treading the same grapes. But it was a splendid occasion, and thank you so much for uh, entertaining us. Uh, Georgia became a member of the Council of Europe, as we all remember, in 1999. And it's absolutely clear, I was last here at the turn of the century. That sounds like 1800 to 1900 or something, but actually it's not so very long ago. But I was last here then. And it's immediately apparent when you arrive that very significant changes under successive governments have been made since Georgia's accession to the Parliamentary Assembly. Uh, huge economic, social and democratic process. Um, it's also a fact that government leaders have changed, but that's been done through the ballot box, and that is entirely right, and it doesn't happen, sadly, in all of the 47 member states of the Council of Europe all of the time. But the democratic process, of course, is important to all of us. Um, just walking around the town yesterday, we realized what huge changes have been made. And of course, it became immediately apparent as some of us walked down Rustavelli Avenue that there's an election taking place while we're here now, and that representatives of different parties under different political colors are competing for public support for the presidency. Well, that competition between ideas, between visions, challenging the ideas, both of the majority and of the minority is right at the heart of the democracy that we're here to discuss. And it's one of the very key principles that we're going to be talking about today in the theme of our uh, conference this morning, parliamentary oversight on the role of the opposition. Now that concept has to recognize that when one polit political force or one coalition of forces gains a majority, and then no matter how large that majority is, 
it doesn't mean that they have the right to govern uncontrolled. Nobody in politics, um, as we're finding out in the United Kingdom at the moment, nobody in politics has a monopoly of wisdom. And again, I think that the fact that we're here today to discuss these issues is a sign that, at least in this country, democracy is alive and well and kicking. Now, at this point, the notes run out of steam because I was told, uh, I've dug the hole, now you're in it on your own, and um, I now go where perhaps angels might fear to tread. But look, I can't stand here on this platform without recognizing the fact that part of your country is under the control of another member state of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. And that, and I believe that I can speak for my colleagues from all of the other 46 member states, is a complete anathema. It is unacceptable, it is wrong, and we look forward to the day when all of the people of your beautiful country, Georgia, are able to call themselves and behave as Georgians as one. So we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Sir Gail, thank you very much for this amazing opening speech. We appreciate your words um, about the key problem that, that Georgia faces. This is occupation problem, of course. But despite this problem, uh, we try our best to develop our country and to develop and progress democracy as well. And we, we see strengthening parliament as a um, vital part of it, vit vital part for this work. And um, I should say that um, the main credit for strengthening parliament institutionally, for strengthening parliament constitutionally, which was recently done, uh, is uh, championed and led by the speaker um, of the parliament of Georgia, who had done tremendous work uh, to improve constitutional provisions, create proper checks and balances in our uh, main law, and uh, works very hard to uh, create Parliament of Georgia and make the Parliament of Georgia the strong institution that it has not been up to now, but it has to be by all means in the future. So I pass the word to the Speaker of uh, Parliament of Georgia, to Mr. Irakli Kobachitsa. Dr. Gay, dear Vice Speaker Chubashvili, dear friends and colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Parliament, welcome to this very important seminar on parliamentary oversight and the role of the opposition. The question that we are going to discuss today goes to the very center of the parliamentary democracy and therefore should deserve broad attention and scrupulous discussion both from the political and the general public. Georgia's constitutional reform is a logical consequence of Georgia's rigorous democratization in the last few years since 2012, when Georgian dream came to power. Parliamentary democracy required restructuring of government institutions and the way they interacted with each other. This was the major reason why we initiated the constitutional reform almost two years ago and successfully completed it this year. Strength, strengthening of the parliament is the centerpiece of this broad political reform. Georgian parliament is the cradle of Georgian democracy where political pluralism and democratic competition takes place and helps our nation to retain and solidify our national independence and sovereignty and also to develop democratic practices. However, the parliament of Georgia remained rather weak and ineffective under the conditions of hyper-presidentialism during the rule of the previous governments. Now this is changing quite rapidly. We have launched several initiatives that are aimed at securing Georgian democracy and ensuring that there is no return of authoritarian practices. 
the new constitution ensures that there is adequate and effective system of checks and balances between executive and legislative branches, which is the cornerstone of the new wording of the constitution. With the reform of the parliamentary rules of procedure, we are going to make sure that the cabinet and government agencies are accountable to the parliament, not only on paper, but in practice as well. Importantly, the scope of the rights and privileges of the opposition is becoming broader. Among others, only one-third of full composition of the parliament, for example, will be required to form an investigative commission, and its opposition membership cannot be fewer than half of the commission. According to the previous wording of the Constitution, it was the privilege only of the majority to create the investigative commissions. Another major development is the reform of the rules of procedure. The new project envisages additional guarantees for greater oversight by the Parliament. First of all, the procedures of the no-confidence vote and the interpolation are getting easier. Under the previous Constitution, it was nearly impossible to, for the Parliament to express the no-confidence to the government, which was the, one of the main weaknesses of the basic law. Currently, this uh, procedure in the Constitution has been improved. Prime Minister's annual address is being introduced. Members of the government and other officials will be required to attend the parliamentary committee meetings, answer questions, and report their activities. And this may happen not only by the request of the majority, but also by the opposition MPs. Each minister will be responsible to address the parliament in the format of a special ministerial hour. Besides these normative changes, parliament is undergoing important transformation in terms of strengthening its capacity in every aspect from staff training to greater material resources. At the end, let me underline the importance of support of our international colleagues and donors in spearheading these seminal changes to Georgia's constitution and parliament. I'm very grateful for your efforts and support, and I express hope that our very productive cooperation will further continue. I will, I will wish you a successful seminar, and thank you for your attention. Thank you so much.